miracle of birth is truly one of life's strangest mysteries. How a bunch of random proteins figured out to reproduce at all is amazing enough. But over time, this process has evolved to have countless methods. Some of which are absolutely jaw-dropping. From the giants who have a long drop to contend with, to our muscular cousins and their telltale knuckles, here's the 20 craziest animal births caught on camera. <sighs> Number 20. Giraffe birth. When a giraffe gives birth, the baby comes out front feet first, head next, and then the rest of the body, and finally the hind legs. Kind of like a Superman position. It's important for a giraffe mother to keep her baby's long neck supported during birth, so she stands. Unexpectedly, a giraffe calf's two meter fall from the safety of its mother's womb to the ground below doesn't harm it. On the contrary, it helps the calf by severing its short umbilical cord and rupturing its amniotic sac. When the baby giraffe lands, it's so startled that it takes its first deep breaths. Baby giraffes are born as tall as an adult human, despite the fact that they appear quite small next to the towering mother. These calves are anything but miniature, as they measure a hefty 1.8 meters in height. In addition, newborn giraffes can add up to 2.5 centimeters to their height every day of the first week. By the time they've turned one, they'll have more than doubled. A giraffe calf has a lot of energy to expend after birth, but it doesn't have much time to rest. Young giraffes are able to stand, nurse, and walk within hours after leaving their mother's protective womb, which is crucial because they need to stay with the group and avoid being hunted by predators. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. This image here is a recreation of a real life incident reported by a farmer in Texas. He says that one of his horses was pregnant with triplets. This is extremely rare in horses and in fact almost unheard of. The mare was so full by the end of her pregnancy that her stomach was practically touching the floor as we can see in this image the farmer made to illustrate. The owner couldn't believe her eyes when she realized what this horse gave birth to. Three amazing foals. Do you believe the farmer? What do you think happened to the mom horse after the birth? Remember to comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know what you think about what we just showed on screen. And now, on to the next topic. Number 19. Gorilla gives birth. When they're born, gorilla babies are smaller than human babies, but it doesn't stay that way for long. Gorilla moms are pregnant for about 8.5 months, and their babies weigh between 1.4 and 1.8 kilograms when they're born. That's about half the weight of an average human baby. But gorillas grow faster and are more fully grown by the time they're 12 years old. Gorillas grow up to weigh much more than the average person by the time they're an adult. Most gorilla babies stay close to their mothers for the first five to six months of their lives. This keeps the baby safe, lets the mother keep track of the baby when she's busy, like... <laughs> when she's hunting or traveling, and it gives the baby comfort. Around the age of three months, gorilla babies will start to play with objects and explore their surroundings. At around eight months, they'll be walking and exploring within a few feet of mom. As they get older and more confident, they'll go further away, frequently with support from siblings and other juveniles. Since a female gorilla's stomach is already so big, it can be hard to tell if she's pregnant or not. But some pregnant gorillas have swollen knuckles for a short time which is one of the best ways to tell if a gorilla is pregnant. Male mountain gorillas don't know which baby is theirs, but they take care of and play with all of the babies in their group, making a big, happy family. Number 18. Chameleon gives birth. Chameleons are born either from an egg laid by their mother or in some species after developing inside the mother and being born alive. With chameleons that lay eggs, called oviparous chameleons, the mother digs a tunnel and then lays between 20 and 200 eggs. In captivity, owners set up laying bins with moist soil so the female can dig and lay her eggs. Depending on the species, it can take between 4 and 12 months or even up to 24 months for the eggs to hatch and the young chameleons to start coming out. The eggs that a female chameleon lays don't have hard shells like chicken eggs do either. Like the eggs of most reptiles, chameleon eggs are soft, which makes it easier for the young to hatch. The one that just came out. Really? Yeah. 
Some chameleons, like the Jacobs chameleon, give birth to live young instead of laying eggs. Embryos grow inside the mother, and they're connected to a sac called a yolk sac, which gives them everything that they need to grow. She can give birth to as many as 30 live babies in one pregnancy. They have a membrane on them that sticks to the leaves or branches in the enclosure. After getting out of their egg sacs, chameleon babies are already walking and climbing around. When these animals are born, they're already independent. They can move around and take care of themselves immediately, which is very important for these tiny lizards. Number 17. Pangolin Gives Birth the shy, harmless pangolin is getting more and more famous because it's thought to be the most trafficked non-human mammal in the world. Ooh, think about that one for a minute. Every year, tens of thousands of pangolins are killed for their scales, which are used in traditional Chinese medicine, and their meat, which is considered a delicacy by some of the richest people in China and Vietnam. Only when they mate and have babies do pangolins hang out together. Some pangolin fathers will stay in the den with their only child until it's old enough to live on its own. The babies are born with soft scales that hardened after two days. Until they're about three months old, they ride on their mom's tails. Even though pangolins look and act a lot like anteaters and armadillos, they're more closely related to bears, cats, and dogs. The scales of a pangolin are made of keratin, which is also found in human fingernails, hair, and animal horn. Like rhino horn, the medicinal value of pangolin scales has never been proven. However, they are used in traditional Chinese medicine to treat a wide range of illnesses, from problems with breastfeeding to arthritis. Number 16. Male Seahorse Giving Birth Seahorses have a fascinating way of making babies. Researchers have found that male and female seahorses will court for a long time. During that time, they'll do a little dance as a kind of seduction ceremony. They try to move in time with each other and mirror each other at the same time. Males and females can look very similar to each other. Based on the abdomen, experts are able to tell them apart before they mate. In this spot, the females are more pointed and sharp. On the males, the pouch is in a rounded, very smooth area. That smooth area is where the eggs will go. On one side of the male's body, there's a pouch. When it's time to mate, the female will put up to 1,500 eggs in the male's pouch. The eggs are small because, well, the pouch is small. The young will be fully grown after the male has carried the eggs for up to 45 days, which is pretty unusual in the animal kingdom for a male to do all the carrying. After dropping them in the ocean, the male will leave them to find their own way in life. Number 15, porcupine giving birth. Porcupines are big, slow-moving rodents whose backs are covered with sharp quills. They live on all continents except Antarctica. Scientists divide porcupines into two groups, those that live in the Old World, which includes Africa, Europe, and Asia, and those that live in the New World, which includes North, Central, and South America. The only species that lives in both the US and Canada is the North American porcupine. Like most mammals, porcupines have live babies instead of laying eggs. The platypus and the echidna, which has spines kind of like a porcupine, are the only two mammals that lay eggs, in fact. In the spring, there's usually only one baby porcupine born per mother. These babies, which are called porcupets, are born with their quills and weigh about a pound. They can stay with their mother for up to six weeks, and by the fall, young porcupines are left on their own. When a porcupette is born, and let's just note here how cute that name is, it weighs about 3% of its mother's weight. When they're born, their quills are soft, but they get hard in a few days. Depending on the species, porcupettes reach adulthood at about 9 months to 2.5 years, and they can live for up to 15 years in the wild. Number 14. Rhino Calf Birth there are only two northern white rhinos left in the whole world. Both of them live in zoos. Najin and Fatu live in the old Pajeta Conservancy in Kenya. Fatu is the daughter of Najin. The two females can't get pregnant, sadly. Najin is too old and has problems with her legs that make it impossible for her to support the weight of a male. Fatu has a problem with her uterus that'll probably keep her from being able to breed. So the sad truth is, we may never see another northern white rhino birth, because we've killed all of them. But there is a small, teeny ray of hope. Conservationists have turned to in vitro fertilization because they can't get the northern white rhinos to breed naturally. But IVF in these rhinoceroses has its own challenges, like figuring out how to get immature eggs to develop outside of the female's body. 
and how to inject sperm into those eggs. Before this rhino hellscape scenario, a female rhino would have given birth to a calf every two and a half to five years. Female rhinos give birth to the young after about 15 to 16 months. Most of the time they only have one child at a time, but sometimes they do have twins. The calf will then go off on its own when it's about three years old, and the longest a rhino can live is 45 years, but they rarely get the opportunity in the wild thanks to poachers. Number 13. Baby Seal Live Birth Elephant seals are the biggest carnivores around today. They can weigh up to 8,800 pounds. They can grow as long as 20 feet. The elephant seal in the north is a little bit smaller than its cousin in the south. Male elephant seals of both species can be up to 10 times heavier than females. When it's time to breed, the males get together on land to mark and protect their breeding territory. Males gather a harem of 40 to 50 females as new ones arrive. They fight other males for the right to mate. Some encounters end with roaring and aggressive posturing, but many others turn into violent and bloody fights. They cut each other up on the necks pretty bad. In late winter, after 11 months of pregnancy, a female gives birth to a single pup. Elephant seals can weigh up to 79 pounds and grow as long as four feet when they're born. The mother takes care of the pup for about a month. She doesn't eat during that time. Both the mother and the baby get their energy from the fat that the mother stored up. While living on land for the next 10 weeks of their lives, new puppies learn how to swim and dive. Number 12. Darwin Frog Birth Charles Darwin found a strange animal in 1834 while he was exploring the southern coast of Chile. The creature, a small frog, looked like it had been blown up like a balloon. It was shaped like a leaf and it had a pointy nose. It turned out that those fat male frogs hadn't been eating a few too many mosquitoes during froggy Thanksgiving. Instead, they were doing things that would make them some of the best dads in nature. They were keeping wriggling babies warm in their vocal sacs. Today, these strange creatures, which are called Darwin's frogs, are split into two species. One lives in northern Chile, and the other lives in southern Chile in Argentina. When a female Darwin's frog lays eggs, her partner keeps a close eye on them until they hatch into tadpoles. The eager dad then swallows his young, allowing the babies to safely grow within his vocal sac until they turn into frogs and are ready to go out on their own. Number 11. Suriname Toad The Suriname Toad does not look like most other toads. It's got a flat, flounder-like body, a triangle-shaped head, and teeny tiny little eyes. It doesn't even have babies like a frog. One of the strangest ways to have babies is through a bunch of tiny holes in the back of the mother, and that's how this weird toad does it. The strange traits don't end here either. Their other common name, star-shaped toad, comes from the fact that their long fingers end in four star-shaped sensory lobes. Because their little, tiny, lidless eyes are on top of their heads, Suriname toads are also called stargazers. Males call to females by snapping a bone in their throat called a hyoid, which makes a sound underwater. When he finds a willing woman, he wraps his arms around her back, which is called amplexus. The two will swim through the water together for hours until the female gives birth to about 100 eggs. After fertilizing the eggs, the male pushes them onto the back of the female. The eggs will be covered by a thick layer of skin that'll grow over them until they're safe and snug in honeycomb-like pockets. Toad babies don't go through a larval or tadpole stage. Instead, after about three to four months, they pop out of their mom's back fully formed half-inch toadlets. Number 10. Orangutan birth captured live on camera at Dural. The orangutan is a great ape, which is a type of primate. The native Dayak people of Borneo have a story about how the orangutan used to be a human who pretended he couldn't talk and climbed into the trees to avoid having to work. Sounds like my kind of dude. Orangutans have the longest time between births of any animal that lives on land. Female orangutans usually give birth once every six to eight years, and like humans, they usually only have one child. Also, an orangutan baby depends on its mother for up to eight years after it's born. Only then does it learn how to live on its own. Because of this, the orangutan's time to reproduce is longer than that of other primates. An orangutan in the wild can live for up to 45 years, and one in the zoo can live for up to 60 years. Humans and orangutans share 97% of the same DNA. 
This makes orangutans one of the animals that's most similar to us. They usually stay in the same forest area where they were born, but now they're extremely close to extinction so we may never learn more amazing facts about these humans of the forest. In case you're a climate change denier, I'll spell it out for you plainly. We're killing all the orangutans because we're ruining the whole planet. Number 9. Rabbit Gives Birth Rabbits have more than one litter a year, and each one can have up to nine babies, which are called kits. In the wild, they're born helpless in a small hole with grass and the mother's fur around it. Mother rabbits only spend a few minutes a day with their young, so they don't attract the attention of predators. The babies grow up quickly and still live with their parents. Rabbits and hares are called legomorphs, which is an order that also includes the pika, a small mammal that lives in colder climates and looks like a large mouse. If you were also obsessed with Pokemon when you were a kid, then yeah, you're definitely thinking about Pikachu right now. Hares are born with their eyes open, their bodies covered in hair, and they can run within a few minutes, just like a guinea pig. Rabbits, on the other hand, are born blind and naked, and they spend their first few days in a fur-lined nest. There's a lot of legends about how rabbits can reproduce so quickly, so it's not surprising that the rabbits become a symbol of fertility in many cultures and religions. As Christianity spread, the symbol started to be linked to Easter. Rabbits are very clean animals that are easy to train and teach to go to the bathroom outside. Like a dog, you can teach a pet rabbit to come when you call it, sit in your lap, and even do some simple tricks. Number 8. Anaconda Birth This species of giant snake lives alone until it's time to mate, which can take many months and usually happens in April or May during the rainy season. Now is the time when male anacondas need to find females. But it's actually still not clear how the males of this species can smell a female. Usually the males follow a trail of pheromones left by females. There's also a chance that the female gives off a chemical that makes male anacondas feel like getting jiggy. This idea is supported by the fact that females don't move when several males come at them from all sides. Male anacondas often flick their tongues to find molecules that let them know a female is nearby. Often, a lot of male anacondas will find the same female. Because of this, strange groups of up to 12 males try to mate with a single female. These groups are called breeding balls, and the teams could stay here between two to four weeks. Each male fights with the other in slow motion inside this ball to get the chance to mate with the female. During mating, males use their spurs to wake up the female. They scrape the female over and over again with their spurs, while pressing her cloacally firmly on her body. This can make a noise like scraping. When the female snake raises her cloacal area in response to the male snake's spurs, mating is at its peak, and the cloacae of the two snakes can move together. The male then wraps his tail around the female, and they mate. Number 7. Sloth Gives Birth How are female sloths shaping up as mothers? The answer is, they're awesome moms. Well, most of the time anyway. A female sloth gives birth to one baby every year after a six-month pregnancy. The baby stays with its mother for about six months, holding onto her stomach as she walks through the forest. This important time of getting to know each other helps the young grow and learn. After about six months, the sloth leaves its mother. It takes over some of her territory and stays in touch with the parent through calls. The main three-toed sloth can have babies at any time of the year, but the pale-throated and brown-throated three-toed sloths can only have babies at certain times of the year. No one is sure how pygmy three-toed sloths have babies. Babies stay with their mother for about five months after they're born. But sometimes baby sloths die indirectly because their mothers won't leave the safety of the trees to grab them if they wander off, and the babies end up falling to the ground. Female sloths usually have one baby each year, but sometimes they can't find a male because they move so slowly it literally takes more than a year looking for a guy. Number 6. Giant African Land Snail the way snails mate is one of the most interesting things in the animal world. Most snail species, even land snails, have both male and female parts. Ooh, get ready for conservatives to freak out! Each of them is able to make both eggs and sperm at the same time. A snail can switch between being the male and being the female during a single mating season. Snails are a little bit freaky. Also, snails can do both jobs at the same time when they're mating, fertilizing each other at the same time. But that's not the end of the interesting details. During mating, they also shoot love darts at each other. 
The mate, on the other hand, may even die in some situations. Snails are pretty weird. When snails are one year old, they have to find a snail partner to mate with. Snails can live for up to seven years, but some can live for up to 25 years. After mating, each snail will lay eggs in the ground or behind a rock. The eggs will hatch in two to four weeks, and a baby snail will be born. About three months pass before the young snail is ready to go out on its own. During that time, it grows and develops in a nest close to the parents. Number five, Komodo dragon lays eggs. One Komodo named Flora lives in the Chester Zoo in England. She's never been kept with a male, but she's laid 11 eggs in an event that shocked even Komodo experts. These virgin births made people very curious because this type of asexual reproduction called parthenogenesis is rare in vertebrates. Only about 70 backbone species can do it, which is about 0.1% of all vertebrates. Biologists have known for a long time that some lizards can make their own young. but seeing it happen in Komodo dragons still surprise zookeepers. Even though there's only one mother and no father, the children are not clones. This is because an egg that hasn't been fertilized only has half the mother's genes. The sperm should normally make up the other half. In parthenogenesis, the mother's half set of chromosomes are doubled to make the full set. So all of the offspring's genes come from the mother, but they're not a copy of her genome. The fact that the Komodo dragon lives alone on islands in the Indonesian archipelago may have given it the ability to have both sexual and parthenogenic reproduction, as it can be very hard to find a mate. Number four, ostrich lays egg. Ostriches are big, non-flying birds with long legs and a long neck that sticks out from their round bodies. Males use their striking black and white coloring to attract females. On the other hand, the females are a light brown color. The male ostrich is called a cock or rooster, and the female is called a hen. But that's where the similarities with the chicken ends. In fact, ostrich chicks can be as big as adult chickens when they're born. Both males and females are responsible for taking care of the young ostriches. During a predator attack, the male usually tries to distract the predator from the chicks while the chicks and the female run for cover. That's a lot more heroic than the whole burying their head in the sand thing that you hear about. The ostrich eggs can weigh up to three pounds and are about six inches in diameter. The eggs are laid in a communal nest called a dump nest, which can hold about 60 eggs at once. Not the cutest name for a nest, but hey, it does the job. Both males and females take care of the eggs till they hatch, which can take anywhere from 42 to 46 days. At six months, a chick is almost as tall as a full grown adult. It'll be fully grown in three to four years, and it can live as long as 75 years. Number three, crested horned shark lays egg. This egg won't turn up in any of your regular Easter hunts. Instead, you'll have to go to the rocky reefs or kelp forests off the coast of California. That's where these corkscrew shaped packages, also called egg cases, are usually laid by California horn sharks. About 43% of sharks and rays lay eggs instead of having live babies. This includes skates, most cat sharks, and nine species of horn sharks. During the spring and summer, California horn sharks lay about two eggs every 10 to 14 days. Each egg has a little embryo inside. The female does not watch over the egg after she lays it. In fact, she just takes off. The baby's left to grow and develop on its own. It gets food from a sack called a yolk. The mother basically fills a little lunchbox with food that the developing embryo will use to grow. The spiral ridges on the egg case, the theory goes, give it a good grip on the rocky crevices where the mother usually lays it. It wedges really well into a rock, so if there's waves and surge, the egg won't move. And it's harder for predators to get to it. Number two, birth of fire salamanders. Well, we already talked about a Pikachu earlier. It only makes sense that we get to Charmander here. Fire salamanders give birth to living young. This means the babies grow inside the egg membranes inside the mother and leave the egg when they're born. Most other salamanders, like newts, lay eggs soon after mating. It takes these eggs a few weeks for them to turn into tiny larvae that don't have legs and need many months to grow up. Fire salamander larvae, on the other hand, have a big head start. They're often more than an inch long and have all four legs fully formed when they're born. 
Their big size makes it easy for them to eat, since big salamander larvae with legs don't need to be fed like small salamander larvae without legs. Which makes sense. Also, because the larvae are so big, they change into adults in a shorter amount of time, when they're about 2 inches long. The rate of growth depends on the temperature and how often the larva feeds, but it can be as short as 4 weeks. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make a joke about it evolving into Charmeleon and Charizard. Number 1. Giant Pacific Octopus Eggs Hatching Octopus are fascinating creatures with amazing problem-solving skills and amazing camouflage. They're smart and they're strange, but in general, they don't last long. Most of the time, they only live one to two years. They're semelparous, which means they only have one child before they die. Once a female octopus has laid her eggs, she dies. In fact, the mother stops eating. She'll stay and watch over her eggs until they hatch, and she'll slowly die of hunger. At the end of her time in captivity, she sometimes rips off her own skin and eats the tips of her own tentacles. Now, scientists know what causes this terrible thing to happen. It has to do with the optic gland, which is like the pituitary gland in humans and is located between the octopus's eyes. Also, no one knows why male octopus usually die after mating, even though they don't have to take care of the eggs like the females do. So there's a lot of stuff that we still don't know about our friends with tentacles. Which of these births amazed you the most? Do you think humans will become like Komodo dragons in the future? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.